And so here's the ocarina I just finished making. I was going to add something to the top here, but I'm not sure. I had to shape the mouthpiece. Got it down to leather hard. See so how I try to do a real exact clean, you know, like it's thin here, like it is thin here. The thick here, but thinner there. I tried to make it a really good rectangle. Tried to make the body real uniform and round. Flattened it. Um, with a, put one of these wet little um, wet dowels with, with a little bit of water and went around. And that makes the circles around the hole come out. See how they are? That way you could feel where your fingers go. Uh, I already know that, but it's nice to have it there. It's So listen to it. It sounds got one, two, three, four, five notes. So one, two, three, four, five, right? There you go. Can't play it much more because it's wet. So there's the ocarina. That's what it looks like. Real simple one. And in ancient Mexico, what they would do is they'd glue a little head on right here. And then put four little feet and you'd have a little uh, ocarina. Let me show you what, you know, our ancestors did with those shapes. Okay. So you can see they got the round figure, extended the mouthpiece, put legs on the bottom, and there's the hole. And the holes on top, like the holes on top of this one. So if you look at it, they're really the same. Huh? I just didn't get to put the little squintly dog. And that, I got to get that mouthpiece down. It's a little different. It's a little closer from the exit to where it hits the blade. This is, we can call this the edge tone assembly or the blade. It's very sharp. And the exit hole, you blow here. And the hole, the sound comes out right Maybe you could see it. There it is. There, you see that little slot? That comes. The air comes straight out, and it goes over this empty space, hitting the edge of this thing here. That's the edge. That's where the air splits and causes the column to vibrate. That is the hardest thing to do in making the ocarina. Here's one that I made a long time ago. You can see the round body. Okay, and there's the mouthpiece, and there's the air window at the bottom. I should can compare them in size like that. How about that? Uh, and then what I did is I put the wings on it. It's got four holes, like it has four holes on top, and put the head. So I didn't know much about glazing, but this is what I did. My finger's not covering it well because I have long fingers from playing guitar, so I have to make the instruments now. When I cover that hole, my fingernail hits the neck and doesn't let me cover the hole good. See? <laughs> so it happens when you have long nails. And uh, this is one I made last year. See, last year I began doing this, and um, I copied an artifact. And this is a artifact that's... This is covered traditional style. The clay was white, and I covered it in a, in, a, in a clay, but it's called slip when you add a lot of water. And so you color it over with this coffee-colored uh, uh, color. And then, uh, what do you call it? You let it uh, fire it, and then you come over here and etch it out. So that's etch. That's not colored. So that's the original clay underneath. So this is the little, uh, probably a salamander. He's got a great sound. And actually, the, where the exit hole is, you can see it there, that little slot to where the edge of the, the, the drive, I call it the driveway, uh, is, is that it should be a little closer that way so that the air immediately comes out and hits the blade and splits the sound. But for some reason, it works great. Check him out.
He's got a wonderful volume of strong on all four notes, all five. And so there you go. Plan to get better. I'm not perfect, but I'm having fun. And uh, anyway, that's about it. Oh, here's another one I made a long time ago. Might as well play them. I made this, uh, one of my first flutes, a little Quetzalcoat with the eyes, the style of the way they made the uh, clay art in Colima and in uh, Jalisco. And I made, I got the wet uh, dowel again and wet it. And you, when you go around in a circle, it causes the clay to erupt. And that way you can really feel the holes. And so there's the little, see the sound, app, see the, the air coming out there? And it has to hit this driveway. And these walls on the side are so that when you're playing outside and the wind's blowing, it won't interrupt this. These can't. If it doesn't have that, they won't be able to play outside well. There you go. I don't take that one out much. And, uh... When I first made one a long time ago, this is, believe it or not, my first one. It's a copy of an artifact. Yeah, the artifact looks just like this. I think it might be a coati. It's like a species of a raccoon with a long, long nose. But they had big teeth in the artifact. And you can see there, using the same um, model of the ocarina. Put the feet on front. And like I said, this, this one's a copy of an artifact. He sounds badass. He's cool. go beautiful look at that artwork i did you know i really tried to make things really really neat and precise you know um i've done other things like make uh masks and polish them for muertos except the earring fell off so i see that's what i'm learning how to attach pieces on of course they're hollow but i'm going to use this for a necklace anyway maybe i'll knock this off and just still use the cabeza and then, of course, the eyes are the shapes of the uh, um, hikuli or the, uh, what do you call that stuff? The uh, uh, peyote. And then I did this beautiful dark clay. This came out great with the makui sochi, the five flower symbol. That's yellow with a really, uh, it's a really beautiful kind of glaze. It's, it's non-glossy uh, or too glossy. And this is all polished. I put the holes there. It's going to be in, uh, a pendant, you know, to wear right here. And so I can make those things, you know. Um, what else did I make? I made a number of other things. I can't grab them all. But, holy madre mia. Okay, here you go. Might as well show all my stuff, huh? A little Teotihuacano mask I made with the holes for the necklace to go through. And that's exactly, a, I, I'm, well, see, while I'm learning how to, this is what I'm trying to say. While I'm trying to learn how the clay behaves, how it dries, when it does what it does, I figure I might as well learn how to um, I might as well copy artifacts. And copying art artifacts and things is not hard because I've been drawing since I was three. So here's not a very good one, but there's the body again with the little feet. And I made a little jaguar.
Oh, that wasn't me. It was a fire thing. Then I did another necklace. These are all, again, copies of artifacts. That's uh, just clay has been fired. And then I got a stone. And then you rub it and you polish it. Real. I'm really interested in the... I like the glazes, but um, speaking of glazes, I didn't use glaze on this. This is natural pigment paint. I make this from smashing the yellow ochre rock, the red ochre rock, and, of course, white chalk. Smash it and mix it with uh, um, the, what they call the baba, but I hate to say that, the juice of the cactus with water and cal. And this is a traditional paint. These instruments were painted not because I guess they had, I don't know if they had uh, glazes back then, but um, I didn't research all that uh, about the, I researched the instruments, but I didn't research how they decorated them. I didn't uh, do that. I know they fired them in different manners. Oh, so you can see a little tlapizali. This is one of my first ones I ever made. The mouthpiece is a little big, but I didn't know, learn to do that on. And of course, the, that's perfect because it's very short where the exit hole is, where the air comes out. To where it meets that little blade is very close. That means the air hits it, causing it to vibrate. Three holes. The holes are erupted so you can feel them. And the five flower, very sacred symbol in Mexico. This dude's bad. Very cool. Anyway, that's the clay journey. It started last August, and then I left it alone for a whole year, and I didn't pick it up again. And when I picked it up last August, I was probably active for about six weeks, and I made about seven instruments, and it was cool. And then uh, this time, what I'm doing is I'm going to make like 20 or 30 little things like this. This is one of them I'm making a number with, with a number of other ones. They're posted on Facebook. And then I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to use all these unless I really play when I go, wow, I really want this one. But I, but I got a million of these already. So I'm going to get them because I got to learn how to make that part. This part's not hard. You stick in the clay, stick in the stick with a tool, and you go all the way through. And then when the stick is about halfway to the body, not to the other side, over on, you don't want it to come out that side so you don't push it. On the, I'm like doing an x ray. You push the stick all the way in, and you stop. Then you get the other stick and dig straight down and make the first hole. Dig down and then press flat so you get the driveway. And then you're going to clean up. And when you clean up, that's where all the danger is. Anyway, there's a little, you could, tons of things here on YouTube about how to make ocarinas. There's a really great book. Uh, I talked to her once. Her name was uh, jo jo Joanne or Joan Moniot. M-O-N-I-O-T. Talked to her like 30 years ago. And uh, she's got a great book called Making Clay Whistles, which... It's really wrong. A whistle is produced one or two notes. Ocarinas are flutes that produce, you know, two, three, or four, or five notes more. Anyway, there you go. The difference between flutes and whistles are, whistles are monodic, and flutes are, are polyphonic. They make more than one note. Anyway, uh, talk to you then. And the Nahuatl word, I'll leave you with a Nahuatl word for the instrument. Ocarina is an Italian word, I believe, that refers to, like, little goose or something weird like that. But I prefer the Nahuatl, which is huila. Capistli. We la capistli in Nahuatl. Not Nahuatl. Nahuatl. See a piece. www.martinespino.com